these stories have been remarkable this evening. And our final speaker is Shannon Smith, who is new to Laramie. She is the brand new executive director for the Wyoming Humanities Council, which has sponsored this evening. <laughs> Shannon is a historian and an award-winning author writing about women in the American West. She worked on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation for, sev for seven years and continues to work on projects that support American Indian causes. Before that, she worked for almost 20 years in the software industry in New York City, Boston, and Denver. So you feel right at home in Laramie, right, Shannon? She and her husband, Scott, travel the West in their RV, stopping at every historical marker, monument, and UFO viewing station that they find. Her title today, that title that terrifies any of us who have ever sought a degree, do you want fries with that degree? Please welcome Shannon Smith. What is the value and purpose of college education? This is the story of my journey into higher education and an exploration of how society views what we learn. In the early 1980s, I graduated from college with a degree in computer science, where I learned to program using punch cards. That's not me, but I definitely had those genes. <laughs> in the early days of the software world, programmers were in very high demand, which is why I chose that degree. I wanted to make the big bucks, get the heck out of Nebraska, so I could move to New York City and become a yuppie. It was the 80s, this is what we did. 20 years later, I found that I was very dissatisfied with my career, and I couldn't quite put my finger on what the problem was. Eventually, I came to the understanding that I didn't want my grave to say she sold a lot of software. So when I tried to isolate really what was going on, I decided I needed to go back to school and get a more well-rounded education. So I went back to Nebraska and got a PhD in history, and yes, my family thought I was crazy. So my first job was teaching in higher ed was at Oglala Lakota College on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation. And yes, my first job was teaching American history to American Indians. <laughs> I spent seven years there, and I can tell you I learned more than they ever learned from me. This is a picture of my good friend John around him, a Lakota spiritual elder, and he's a good friend of mine and he's featured in the Museum of the American Indian in DC. He worked to try to teach me how to speak Lakota and the way that he did it was to teach me like a child. First listen, then speak, then read, then write, and try to stay in the present. Something kids can do, but adults not so much. This kind of helped me prepare for the next phase in my world of higher education where I became a research fellow at EDUCAUSE where I was trying to study how higher education was being impacted by technology. Most of you in this room know that there's a lot of talk about disruptive innovation in higher education and how technology is doing all kinds, shaking things up in a terrible or beautiful way depending on your perspective. On top of that, there are a lot of societal forces that are putting pressures on colleges and universities in all kinds of new ways. States are slashing funding, Student loans are ruining people's lives, and free online courses are shaking things up in such a way that it makes you wonder, why do I want to go to college? What is the point of a degree? Obviously, it's about learning and keeping skills so that you can keep your job and make a better living. But it's about more than preparing for a specific vocation. In 1818, Thomas Jefferson wrote that the objectives of an education were to give every citizen the information he needs to, for the transaction of his own business, to know his rights and understand his duties to his neighbors and country, and to faithfully observe all the social relations under which he shall be placed. So as early as 1818, Jefferson identified the yin and yang-like dual yet complementary objectives of higher education, preparing for a career, and learning to be a good human being, you know, the humanities. Some folks position these two goals as a zero-sum game, and can't directly relate humanities topics to career potentials. They think studying humanities prepares you for a life of, do you want fries with that? Bill Gates and Steve Jobs are on the opposite sides of this debate, with Gates stating that the United States should reduce investment in humanities, while Jobs said that technology married with the liberal arts and humanities was what made his post-PC devices so beautiful. And just a few weeks ago, a congressionally requested commission reported the urgent need for the country to refocus on the humanities in order to create future leaders who can engage with the world. Indeed, the liberal arts and humanities should not be the hoops that you jump through to get a degree. 
They are the pathway that transforms disciplinary knowledge into interdisciplinary wisdom, a wisdom that can prepare you for a long life of learning and inevitable career changes like mine. OLC's graduation powwow was a glorious day-long celebration where I saw how a community prized the learning of their culture as much as the trade skills of the degrees that were being awarded. That's where I came to see the true value of a college degree. My dear friend John died in 2006, but his presence and teachings are still with me. And to prove it, I'm going to sing you all his song in Lakota, one that always made John and his, my Lakota friends laugh when this little white girl would sing. Wanji numpa yam ni wasichu, topa zaptan shak pe wasichu, shaka win shagloga numshi unka wasichu, wichemna wasichu, hokshila. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>